Hey crafters, welcome to Paulette's Pretty Paper Crafts. It's October 13, 2015, and I'm playing in Kathy Rakusen's 30-Day Color Challenge. This is actually the watercolor painting we're going to be doing today, omitting the butterfly and the ants. <laughs> I really thought I could sit down and do these Indian corn, and this is going to be a pen and watercolor technique. But I couldn't find these corn, and I have to have something in front of me to go by. So that went south when I couldn't draw my corn and I've got this little water can stamped image by Stamp Abilities and we're just going to use it. So the idea is that you will sketch in pencil, well if you're cheating and I'm cheating, sketch in pencil because I'm not good enough to just draw in my permanent pen first and that's okay Lindsay said it was okay um, I learned how to do this over at the frugal crafter Lindsay were she is um, just an amazing watercolor artist and I enjoy watching her watercolor so ultimately, I drew the leaves that were in the watering can, and then I changed my mind and decided I was not going to draw the flowers in the watering can. I would rather draw these flowers that I've been drawing for years, doodling on stuff. And, you know, I can doodle, but I can't really draw. <laughs> Does that make any sense? So, and then I'm doing the leaves I always draw. I used to draw these flowers on, you know, birthday packages that I would send out in the mail. So now I'm erasing my pencil marks and finishing up here. I've filled in everything with my permanent marker. And I'm adding some finishing touches to my flowers. And I'm going to use some Crayola washable markers in a light blue, a medium green, a dark green, a kind of rosy pink, and a light purple. And then I realized there were a couple of lines I didn't color with my permanent marker. So I'm doing that. And then I also pulled in this light teal, which is actually um, mimicking the artwork that is on the face of the stamp. My little watercolor image here that I'm using is um, copied or mimicked based on the artwork that whoever created the stamp did you know, for the sticker on the stamp. And I just really love that. It's light blue, it's teal, it's dark blue. And I just, I think it's beautiful. I actually did a Copic uh, rendition of this earlier this year, probably in the spring on one of the name tags. And now I'm gonna try it in just a larger scale watercolor. One thing I think is really important to remember is to just play. Don't pressure yourself into things having to be perfect. And because, you know, a lot of times I have things that don't quite turn out the way I want them to, especially while I'm doing a challenge um, or taking an online card class uh, because you're limited to time or maybe you just feel like you are and you're in the heat of the moment it's just it's the same thing for me when I'm creating a card an hour before I need to walk out the door with it I mean it's just <laughs> it's just not going to happen and I'm not going to be happy with it I'm not good enough to give myself the freedom to just create and not worry about it being perfect so I would say really go easy on yourself if you ultimately color things that doesn't matter if they're watercolor, if they're alcohol marker colored, if they're colored pencil colored. If you are not happy with them in the moment or the stress of trying to meet a deadline, then put it aside. I have a special drawer in my craft room where I toss all of these things. And when I come back to them later, a day later, a week later, a month later, they're not half as bad as I thought they were when I was stressed out and frustrated and things weren't going right or weren't going the way I had envisioned in, in my mind. So watercolor is all about, I think, expression. For me, it's relaxing. 
just to dabble and experiment and see what works for me and what doesn't work for me. I find that I enjoy it with the Crayola washable markers. I enjoy it with my Stampin' Up! water-based diary inkers. And I also enjoy it with some real watercolors that are in tubes that I can squirt out on a palette and add water to. So, you know, watercolor is very forgiving. And I'm really not brave enough to do anything on a very big piece of watercolor paper. Um, those corn were actually painted on, gosh, what were they? Probably four and a half by six inches. And that's the biggest watercolor I've ever done. And, um, you know, this is a little bit smaller, but that's what I would recommend to you. If, you know, I, I think I have a mental block to uh, things that I've not ever done before or not experienced before. So start small. I started doing watercolor with the little stamped images, just like that little watering can image. And, you know, with house mouse or penny black stamps, and they're just darling stamps anyway. And you can very easily watercolor them. They're small spaces. They don't take much shading. And people, I found that the people that I give cards to, which are my mom and dad and uh, my daughter and daughter-in-law and my son and son-in-law and my cousins and aunts, really, really enjoy these little watercolors. And the cool thing about it is, is you can, you know, later you can die cut them or you can put them on a tag or you can just put them on a card and people really enjoy them. I also want to remind you to be sure and sign your work. I try to, you know, scribble some extra little lines and make some little dots that I can hide my signature into, and I don't sign my whole name. I sign my first initial, and then I print my last name. That way, it is not my signature, but it is my name. I have this weird thing about putting my signature on on public stuff. So, do what works for you. We've had a couple of different identity theft things, and so I just don't want my signature out there on, you know, the web, I guess. But anyway, I just think these are really fun. I hope you guys are having fun. I hope you are doing the 30-day color challenge. One of the things I love about Kathy's challenge is it's just to color something. Have some me time. Have some relaxing coloring time. And, you know, for most of the challenge, I'm having to do mine after, after my grandkids go home. And then I'm late. I'm a little bit late posting some of my things because I have to edit them. My videos are like 30 and 40 minutes long per project. And then I have to try to edit them down. And sometimes I'm really good at that. And sometimes I'm not, um, not very easily objective. So there it is. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, be sure and let me know.